Before we begin today's tutorial, I'd like to point out that while this demonstration uses workbooks for demonstration purposes, row-level security should always be implemented in data sets. This allows you to obfuscate the underlying filter logic and prevent people who shouldn't have access to the RLS implementation from being able to make changes that would allow them to see underlying data. So just remember, always use data sets for your row-level security implementation. Now, let's begin. My name is Curtis, and I'm a Sigma architect here on the customer success team. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to implement row-level security. So first, I'll go ahead and bring in my Plugs Electronics hands-on lab data, and let's go ahead and extract the email column. So today, we wanna to show what it looks like when you're trying to implement row-level security in a way that allows you as an admin to have a high level overview of the data, but then when your individual users come in here, they can only see the data that pertains to them. So first thing I'll do is add a column here with the current user email function. And we'll see that that outputs the, address, the email address of the currently logged in user. So mine is Curtis at sigmacomputing.com and this is our admin you know, email that we want to make sure it can see anything. Uh, so I'll go ahead and equal or and add Current user email equals Curtis at sigmacomputing.com. And then we see true. So right now, if I add a filter to keep only true, it's going to give me, it won't exclude any rows. But what I want for the end user is that if ckelly at biodex.edu logs in, they can only see ckelly at biodex.edu related rows. Uh, so I'll go ahead and add another condition in here. Say or current user email equals, and then I will pass in the customer email column. So now we have our RLS, and we've made sure to filter this column so that only true is included. And then let's go ahead and just quickly add a summary. Uh, let's get a count distinctive email. So we have 4,866 different users that I can see their data. Um, I'll go ahead and publish this document. And then we can see what it looks like from the perspective of a random, let's say this user. So I'll copy the email address. I'll go ahead and click embedding, generate a secure embed path for this table. And what we need to do is give it some client credentials. Uh, put this embed user on a team. So it's worth calling out at this point that uh, I'm putting them on this Castro team. I also have to make sure that this document is shared with the Castro team, which it is. So I'll come back in here and then I'll go ahead and paste that email. We'll make them a default user. And that should be everything we need to do. So I'll go ahead and click load embed here. And we can see that when this table loads, this user only has access to one distinct uh, user email, only their own data. So again, just to recap, when mfields at tin.name comes in, they can only see their data. But when we come back to our workbook as the admin, we can see 4,866 people's data. So the um, row level security is entirely implemented in the filter logic here. Uh, you needed to just output a Boolean condition on which then you filter that column to only include true results. So I hope this has been helpful and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks again for your attention.